Hey everybody, it's Allison Haikila. Thanks so much for joining me today. We're going to do a really cute card that is perfect for your crafty friends. I'm starting off with the Funky Blot Stencil from A Colorful Life Design. This is brand new and it is so cool. I'm going to be adhering my piece of Strathmore Smooth Bristol cardstock to my glass mat with some washi tape just so that I can keep it in place. This stencil is really good because, um, first of all, it's just so cute, but also because you don't need any pixie spray or anything with this when you do some ink blending. I wanted to go for sort of a cyan, magenta, yellow vibe, so I'm starting off with some mustard seed distress ink right in the middle, and then I'm going to work with some picked raspberry and some salty ocean on either side of that. I wanted to start with the yellow so that this way if I needed to dip my brush back into um, the ink, I didn't get any color in my mustard seed ink pad. The other colors would kind of absorb that yellow and it wouldn't really show, but I didn't want to contaminate my yellow pad. So now we're moving on to the salty ocean. I've got my cottontail blending brushes from the rabbit hole designs and I'm getting a really pretty variation of color. Got a nice little rainbow going and I love it. So now I'm pulling off that stencil, but I'm not going to clean that stencil. We're going to do something with that in a little while and you'll see that soon. But I decided the background was a little boring. I needed to do more stuff. I'm going to wind up working with the Artful Brush um, dies from Spellbinders, but not just yet. First, I decided to grab some Lucky Clover and Wilted Violet Distress Inks. I'm adding them to my craft mat on the side. And I'm going to spritz that little area of ink with water and flick it on with my watercolor brush. I just wanted to have a nice full range of color on this card. Um, again, I was kind of going for the cyan magenta yellow thing, but then it's like, oh, I don't want to leave out the green and the purple. So I decided to add those two colors to the background by splattering them. I'm just washing my brush off and now I'm going to add that, that nice wilted violet. And it looks nice because it, it pulls some of the color up from where there's already ink. So it kind of, um, this doesn't oxidize because these are distress inks, but you'll see that it kind of lightens those areas up. But then the, the purple and the green look really pretty back there. So I'm going to set that off to the side. Now we've got that stencil that has all that fabulous ink on it, and I'm going to use Sheer Shimmer Spritz and Sparkle and spray it all over that inky area um, like you would with water. But instead of using the water, we're using the Sheer Shimmer Spritz so that it has some very cool shine on it. So now I'm just going to grab... Um, some paper and just rub over the whole thing, kind of like I'm doing a mono print, right? And then we're gonna lift that up in a moment and we'll have some really cool looking effects on that paper. Just doing it again on the other side because we need to be thorough with this stuff, right? Look at that, how cool is that? And if I want to, I can add more color to it, but I think it looks really nice. And when it dries back, it's gonna have a lot of nice shimmer. So here we go again, I have the Artful Brush from Spellbinders. I filmed this on two separate dates, so I, I forgot that I had shown it to you earlier. And I pre-cut everything so that you didn't have to watch me run this through my die cut machine a million times. And I've got some brown cardstock for my brush handle, some silver cardstock for the metal part that holds the bristles to the brush. I use some craft for the bristles themselves, which I cut four times just to get some nice layering. You can get away with doing just two, but I, I wanted a nice full brush because if you see all those blobs of paint, we got a lot of paint that that brush needs to hold, right? So I'm gluing all of that on with my Barely Arts glue and I'm staggering where the placement is so that it really fills that brush in nicely. You're not gonna wind up seeing too much of the brush because I am putting a lot of those paint blobs on there, but look at how quickly that comes together. Isn't that so cute? And you could totally even add more bristles if you want to. So I'm starting off with a blue for my cyan color, like a turquoisey nice blue. And then I've got this beautiful hot pink that's really similar to picked raspberry. And again, I'm doing some staggering because you want to be able to see all of those droplets, right? And then we have a yellow that's very similar to the mustard seed. Look at how cute that is. And then the parts that are hanging over, you can see there that the pink is hanging over quite a bit. I'm going to just trim that off. I wound up not cutting off the yellow. I didn't. Oh, I did. I, did I? No. I decided not to um, because of the way the bristles are. I felt like it was fine. So I just really needed to remove that little bit of pink there. And that was it. That was good enough. I'm kind of trying to decide what I want to do there. I was going back and forth with how much I should cut, but I thought that was fine. Just that little pink piece. And now I'm just figuring out my placement. 
I decided that I needed a little bit more blue up there because that yellow was a little bit too overpowering. It was just taking over. So I thought adding one more little splooch of paint would be appropriate. I have the Crafty Friends set from Altenew and I'm using the, I missed what it said, Make a Beautiful Mess Today, I think it says. I'm forgetting now and I don't have the stamp set in front of me. Yeah, Make a Beautiful Mess Today and I'm stamping it with Fallen Leaves VersaFine Claire ink. If you've watched my videos before, you know that VersaFine Claire is my favorite ink to use for sentiments because the colors are so fab and it stamps so crisply. Also, you can emboss that ink if you want to. You don't have to. Um, it's smudge proof pretty quickly, not like a regular pigment ink that you can smudge pretty easily. Um, it, it dries down pretty quickly, but it is embossable if you wanted to. So I'm like, meh, it's all white and it's kind of blah, right? So I grabbed some tumbled glass distress ink and I just inked the edges a little bit just so that it wasn't quite so stark. It was just standing out in a negative way on that very cool card background that we made. So what, who would you send this card to? I bet you have a lot of crafty folks that you'd want to send this card to, or at least I hope you do. I can, I can think of a few people that I would appreciate this card. So um, is this something that you would make? Do you like sending just, hey, I'm thinking about you kind of cards to people, or do you stick to like birthdays and holidays and sympathy cards? I kind of prefer myself to send cards just because. I'm not great at sending cards. I'm really trying to get better. But this is a type of card that would totally inspire me just to send because it's cute, right? And it's really fast to make. I mean, this is not taking very long at all. So I let that dry under a couple of acrylic blocks. And if you know me, you know I don't really like to leave white on my card. So I'm grabbing that Wilted Violet and the Lucky Clover ink again. I think I grabbed the Lucky Clover. You see, my card stuff is not in the same room as where I am narrating. So yeah. Pretty sure I used it on the top. Yes, I did. Um, so I start with the Wilted Violet on the bottom. And now, there you go. There's that Lucky Clover. Guys, it's not like I didn't just film this yesterday. You'd think that I'd remember what the heck I did. <laughs> so I'm adding some Lucky Clover to the top. But I need those colors to kind of meet in the middle, bit, uh, the middle a little bit. So I grab that Salty Ocean that I also used on the card. And I just have that kind of as bridging the gap between the two colors. And it's just perfect. Look at that. So fun. Isn't that adorable? I'm going to glue that panel down. No extra riffraff. We don't need any sequins or gems or anything like that. There's plenty going on. And it's just so darn cute. Loving this funky blot stencil. And the artful brush from Spellbinders is just super sweet and really easy to put together. So I hope you liked the card today. I will see you guys very, very soon. I hope that you all be well, stay safe, peace out.